Hey, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours. Guys, thanks again for joining me for another episode. Um, today, we are going to uh, talk about, of course, respiratory emergencies one more time. Um, we're rounding the corner to wrap this subject, this segment of the Monday Minutes up. And we're going on episode 8. And we're going to talk about pneumothorax, and we're going to talk both uh, spontaneous pneumothorax and also tension pneumothorax, okay? So, before I get into it, I'm going to talk about why it's important. We all know that studying for tests, it's great to review this stuff, right? And get this key information. That's what the Monday Minutes are. It's the key points that's in your textbook, the key points of what you usually will see on most EMS exams, national exams, uh, local exams, state exams, right? It's gonna help build that knowledge base. If you, and my course, I encourage you that if you don't understand what I'm talking about, doesn't ring to you 100%, that you go and research a little bit, break open that textbook, do some online uh, Googling, use something like turbomedic.com, Right and get more information about this subject if you're not really understanding it. But this stuff is also important, guys, because it's going to make you a better clinician. It's going to help you make better decisions out in the field. Okay, so that's what it's all about. All right, um, and it help you interact as well with other healthcare providers. Okay. Um, so what are we talking about when we talk about spontaneous pneumothorax and, and tension pneumothorax? It's a sudden accumulation of air in the pleural space, lung collapses on the, on that affected side, and it, a, ten, a, a spontaneous can lead to tension pneumothorax. You can, of course, can get tension pneumothorax as well from trauma, right? <clears throat> so... This can be a life-threatening thing. A lot of times, a spontaneous pneumothorax isn't necessarily life-threatening, okay? But it can be, right? Especially if it's not treated, if it's not recognized. And it can lead to that tension, pneumothorax. So, some of the risks, I'm going to talk about the spontaneous first, just to kind of uh, go over that. Uh, it's much more common in men, especially if they're tall and they smoke, Okay, they can, if you have a, if they have some sort of congenital defect, can, they can be more at risk for it. Females can be at risk, especially if they're smokers and they're thin as well, and they're on their menstruation. Okay, history of some type of lung disease, and you'll see this a lot in COPD patients. I've seen a lot of COPD patients where they will have spontaneous pneumo. Okay, and I'll tell you a little backstory for me. First time I ever saw one, I like knew what it was, but I've never seen it before, right? I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to look stupid. So I didn't say it, and I got to the hospital, and I kind of whispered to the nurse that that's what I thought it was, and sure enough, that's what it was, right? So sometimes you don't see this stuff. It's sort of like that unicorn, right? You don't always, you might not ever see this thing, but when you do, you kind of know what it is, but you're just kind of afraid to say it because you don't want to look dumb or don't want to seem like you're kind of zebra hunting. But it's pretty um, evident, I think, when you do get these type of things, okay? So when you're assessing these patients, guys, okay, especially for, you know, it can actually be for both tension and, and spontaneous, but they're going to have a sudden onset, sharp chest pain. Of course, they'll be short of breath. You're going to have the, the decreased lung sounds. Increase in respirations, and your spontaneous is going to be coughing. They're going to be a little agitated, right? They're getting a little hypoxic. They're going to get anxious, okay? When we talk about that tension pneumo, they can have a weak pulse. They can be cyanotic, low blood pressure. Again, decrease in breath sounds, JVD. Of course, you might have heard of the tracheal deviation. That's sort of a later sign, okay? And you're going to have spontaneous 
and uh, uh, subcutaneous emphysema as well. Okay, the kind of the crackling, crepitus sort of going around in the uh, the pearl space there. All right, so guys, this is some of the signs you need to look for. Okay, um, now when we talk about management of these patients. For the spontaneous, there's not much you can do, right? It, unless it develops into attention. But you can support it, man, manage that airway, of course, do your ABCs, high flow oxygen, get an EKG to make sure it's not affecting the heart, okay? Um, but when we talk about attention pneumo, the one thing we can do, and many agencies uh, do it, they have different ways, different methods, is the needle decompression. When I say different ways, different methods, it depends upon your local protocol, okay? I know some agencies where the patient can have all the signs and symptoms, but unless their blood pressure is below 90, they can't do the needle decompression, okay? Others will say to go ahead and do it regardless. They'll even say do decompression on a spontaneous pneumo if the pressure is building up too much, Okay? Um, so follow your guidelines, guys. Follow your local protocols. Follow what it is you're allowed to do, okay? And think about that bigger picture, all the different signs and symptoms and all that stuff of what you're doing, okay? Because it's all going to kind of tie in together when you're doing your assessment. And again, you might be more on the lookout for attention pneumo when you've got a chest trauma patient, right? Um, but that spontaneous can sneak up on you if you're not careful and then develop into attention. So stay ahead of that eight ball. Stay ahead of that curve, okay? All right, so that's pretty much it, guys. Um, again, not a lot we can do unless it's attention or we're going to do a needle decompression. Most of our interventions here are supportive, okay? Of course, you know, IV fluid, things like that, but that's for any sort of patient, right? Um, so just kind of keep all this stuff in mind uh, when you're doing your assessments, guys, all right? Patients don't follow the textbook, right? But our textbook for us can give us these key elements, can give us this knowledge and build that knowledge base so that when the patient is presented to us, whether they're following, it, following the textbook presentation of a certain illness or, or injury, we can identify because we're the EMS professionals, we're the clinicians that are out here constantly building our knowledge base, constantly bettering ourselves as EMS professionals. All right. Guys, um, I hope you engage with me. Check me out on social media. I'm on Twitter at EMS Safe there, um, and I'm also on Instagram at EMS Safe as well. You can hook me up on Facebook as well. It's facebookcom slash EMS Professional. And of course, guys, if you're interested in more information and study help and practice exams and videos and audios and all that great stuff guys go check out the main site at emsseo.com that's the site where you can really build your knowledge base guys get some more information there um, on how to be a great ems professional okay and that seo stands for success education and opportunity okay and it's to your success your education and your opportunity to be better as an EMS provider and also to be better, the opportunity to be better and to be somebody who can really make a difference when it comes to your patients, right? Something I've been saying a lot lately is giving your patients an unfair advantage, right? And that's how you do it, guys, by increasing that knowledge base and moving your little knowledge needle a little bit every week, every month, or whatever the case may be. All right, so guys... Questions, comments, concerns about any of this stuff, ideas for your for a Monday minutes you'd like to see, uh, send it over to me. It's contact at emsofficehours.com. Be sure to go visit the blog if you're watching this video on YouTube at emsofficehours.com and watch previous episodes of the Monday Minutes. Listen to the EMS Office Hours podcast as well and um, other content that's on the blog also at emsofficehours.com. All right, that is it, guys. As always, I am Jim Hoffman for EMS Office Hours and the Monday Minutes. Stay safe.